Is it okay to do side work if I'm employed for someone in that field already? We're going to talk about what side work is, if it's illegal, and when it might be okay to do it. We've been using House Call Pro since 2016. We needed something that would let us schedule our appointments, give our text directions to our customers through Google Maps, write up estimates, send invoices, collect payment, and integrate with QuickBooks Online. But they do so much more than that too. We researched over a dozen software programs and found that their price was less than half of the bigger CRMs. House Call Pro is by far the most user-friendly for our technicians in the field too. We were able to go completely paperless and start creating professional looking estimates and invoices with our logo. House Call Pro automatically sends appointment reminders the day before the job, lets them know when we're on the way and when the call is finished. Get a free demo of the number one app for home service pros by clicking on housecallpro.com forward slash Fox Family in the description below this video. That's housecallpro.com forward slash Fox Family. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. In my state, it's illegal to perform your normal blue collar construction job like plumbing, electrical, HVAC, carpentry, windows, roofing, and other types of handyman jobs if you're collecting more than $500. If you were looking for the answer to whether or not it's illegal, it is. Just like so many other people who entered the trades, I thrived on any knowledge I could gain in my field to be as good as I could be. I was just appreciative of having a job that I could dependably go to and have work on a steady basis. All I wanted to do was earn the respect of my peers and be considered someone that customers would ask for and managers would send to the tough jobs. As people settle into their jobs though, they become complacent. They start getting itchy and looking for more. I can do this. I can change out that part on this air conditioner for less money than the company I work for and make way more money than my hourly pay for doing it. Here's what side work is. One time I was at a house and I quoted the customer $275 for a part that only cost my boss about $25 online. So the customer asked me if they bought the part online would I come back after hours and install it for $100. I've always been one who considers right from wrong. I not only let the customer know that I wouldn't do it, but I let my boss know so that they could either address it with the customer himself or just chalk it up and leave it alone knowing that there are people out there like that who are always going to try and get the cheapest deal. It's funny because that person knows it's wrong to ask me to do the side work. If he didn't, do you think he'd really call my boss up and ask him if it was okay for me to come back out after hours and install the part he found online for cheaper? Probably not. Entering a world of doing side work on your own while you save enough to start your own business cuts your own throat in a way. It's like tradesmen who knowingly buy stolen tools to use on their job site instead of going to the store or going online and paying legitimate prices for legitimate tools. If you do this, then don't get mad when you start your own company someday and find lowballers are undercutting your prices now that you have more expenses than they do. Contractors have way more expenses than technicians who wait until they get off of work, come back, and do the job that the customer didn't want to pay for when they were on the clock. Really, doing side work, whether legitimately or not, a person doing this kind of side work has the same risk as a real contractor. Not getting paid, fire, injury, lawsuit, warranty, and other things. Contractors have so many bills. We have to carry general liability insurance. My company has a $1 million policy that we have to pay for each month. Even as a small to mid-sized HVAC company, our monthly bills, including paying everyone, is in the tens of thousands of dollars. This is why we charge the prices we do. Follow me for a second. A really experienced contractor who sends their guys out in the field, on average, bills the service techs out for about 50% of the actual time that they're on the clock. The rest is rent, payroll, administrative cost, attorneys, drive time, stocking up the warehouse, paperwork, weekly training sessions, running for parts, return visits that aren't even charged to the customer, and so many other things. Consider the $30,000 service van that you're driving around that's only going to last about five years and maybe be worth about $5,000 when the company goes to trade it in for your next van. It's shocking if you think about how much it costs to roll a van to a service call or an installation. 
There are even business owners themselves who don't understand that cost entirely. But getting back to it, I'm not saying that doing a little work for family and close friends isn't right, because no one's going to turn down family. Everyone's got someone they know who can do the work. A buddy who's a mechanic, an aunt who's a seamstress, an uncle who's a roofer. That's not a person running some underground business, it's just common decency. I've even gone over to my next door neighbor's house when I worked for someone else and replaced a bad capacitor on their AC. Was that wrong? Some people would say yes. But as a contractor myself, I would say no. There's always going to be some line that you shouldn't cross. But I will say this, if you're going to do side work, don't use my tools, don't use my parts, my equipment, my van, or my name and reputation. Technically, if there's any legal requirement to be a contractor in your area and you don't meet those requirements, there's no legal requirement that a customer has to pay you for your work even if you've completed it to their satisfaction. Even if you have a contract signed by both parties, you'll lose any legal attempt to collect. Take the customer to court. <laughs> the court will simply deny your claim as the courts can't rule on an illegal act. And operating without any kind of required license, insurance, bonds, registration, etc. is an illegal act. That's the line that you're crossing when you decide to take on that side work. I know I'm not going to change the minds of the masses of side jobbers out there who think that lowballing their bosses for one reason or another is okay. I'm all for healthy competition and real contractors keeping each other in check with pricing. Good contractors don't suffer from a lack of work because all of the people that are out there doing side work. It's simply the principle. Contractors have worked for years building up their businesses and finding employable technicians who can be insured and carry out the job in a safe, precise, and professional manner. All I'm saying is think about what you're doing before you take on that side job. Is it worth your job if you get caught and get fired? Probably not. Is it worth doing a little bit of side work while you're waiting for your license to process with the state or while you're saving up the money to even get started? Probably not. Let me know what you think about this topic in the comments below. Do you think it's harmless or are you not willing to cross that line to keep things legitimate? If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.